wool band on the floor in the wind. Billy Dean is not my love, but Einstein is my love. And my name is Professor Sabor Isaac Berry from Berry Time Lab. Today we will be looking at the field of Crazy Power 2. Have an update on the China issue. Let's describe this picture. What's happening? Well, you see Xi Jinping, obviously. You see two of the top scientists discussing something, probably. And then you see a whole bunch of cows in the back. <coughs> now, you might be saying, what's happening here? Well, let me give you some context. China's president, Xi Jinping, he called up the premier again, and he asked, are we doing better than America? And then the premier said, yes, sire, we are doing better than America in technology. And then China's president said, how? And then the premier said, we copied iPhone, we copied iMac, we copied iPad, we copied iSlap, and we copied Android as well. China president said, are we doing better in fast food? And then the premier said, yes, sire, we are doing better in fast food as well. And fast food, we copied McDonald's, we copied uh, Taco Bell, we copied Burger King, we copied McDonald's, we copied Dunkin' Donuts. And then, why did you say McDonald's twice? And then the premier said, because we have more McDonald's in China than in America. <laughs> and then, well, Xi Jinping asked, are we doing better in the celebrations? And then the premier said, yes, we are also doing better in celebrations. Only one lonely loser celebrating July 4th in America democracy. Meanwhile, in our communist brotherhood, millions of people are celebrating the founding of the communist party. Forget the blood. And then how many presidents said, uh, we don't uh, talk about how many people we kill in public. And then the Chinese president said, are we doing better in sight? And the premier said, yes, sire, in everything but the field. And then the Chinese president said, look at this picture. I made an official presidential trip to the field with all the cows. And we made a plan with two of China's greatest scientists to make the field even bigger, the grass taller, uh, the field is even bigger, and the double the cow. The Muslims started celebrating because they saw a new opportunity for food. It's <laughs> kind of embarrassing because he just said gravity and pulls two things that are distanced away together, but he never specified how MD exerted its force. He never specified anything about that. So. It was kind of embarrassing, and when Einstein came to, uh, well, take his work and change it and revolutionize it, now it's actually something that's three-dimensional, and when you come near, like, the edges of a little packet of space-time, then that thing bends. But in order to comprehend it, we won't be using a 3D analogy, but rather just be using one face of that 3D analogy, or a 2D analogy. So, basically, let's say you have the sun, which I'll make yellow, and then you have the, oh my god, does the sun have a mustache now? Yeah, the sun really does. And then you have the earth right over here, just doing what earth do. So, let's just draw it, and this is the earth, right? And But the thing was, Newton just said, Hmm, they were distant away, and he used his little wacky equation, but he never actually specified. This is the magnitude, but how do these things pull themselves together? That was never specified in his theory. And so, Einstein made a prediction that worked even better. Einstein made a prediction of space-time which was basically a blending of space and time, which is kind of like four dimensional, because three dimensions of space, you already know that, and one dimension of time. So it's kind of like an infinite cube. So anyway, if you draw it, it's kind of like a rubber sheet. And here, around this area, it bends because of the sun. So, Around this area, it bends because of the very massive sun. So you can see it like bending. Now let's put this into video. So you can see that while well, the Earth is orbiting around the sun, but we can see a space-time explanation over here. You can see the sun makes a really big hole. The Earth makes a tiny hole around it, 
but it's still a pretty big hole. And this is what attracts the moon. And the sun's big hole is what attracts the earth. And you can see that. It's not the most perfect analogy. And this 2D plane is shown for visualization only. So our high school dropout analogy says that matter tells this four-dimensional space-time how to occur, just like when you put a bowling ball on a rubber seat. And thus, this curved space-time tells matter how to move around other matter. So that's kind of like a circular power relationship. Matter has power over space-time, space-time has power over matter. So it's kind of like a circular relationship. Isn't it now? All right. So this is the basics of matter covering space-time. Mm. But now let's jump to something different because, well, this is about gravity. And you know that gravity is acceleration. We all know that. But what if I could told you that acceleration and gravity could cancel each other out? Let's take a look at this. And then you have it inside the bottle. And inside the bottle, let's say that you poke some tiny holes. And obviously, the water will come leaking out of that hole. But let's see what happens when you make that water bottle fall. When it falls, it feels no weight. And thus, when it feels no weight, it won't squirm everything out of the hole. Of course, when it lands on the ground, it'll make a mess. But during its free fall, it feels no weight. And so, it won't squeeze everything out. Instead, it'll just stay in the packet like it would. So, uh, now the thing was, you just didn't understand this mechanism of gravity. If I were trying to travel back to 1687 or something and ask Newton what gravity was, he'd say it's F equals E and 1 M2 over R squared. He'd say it's this, F equals E M 1 M2 over R squared. But, what if I time traveled back to 1915 and asked Einstein? Well, he would say R menu, which is the VT tensor, minus half, you didn't know that, G menu times R plus G menu, uh, no, menu times the cosmological constant, and then finally, that's equal to 8 pi G, sorry, I made a mistake with the gravitational constant last time, divided by well, C to the fourth, so obsessed with the letter R, I'm sorry, T many. And so, this is what Einstein would use. Now, if you're a high school uh, dropout, you'd probably faint even seeing the sight of this. But uh, Newton didn't understand this. So, let's make a table of who's right and who's wrong. Don't worry, I'll make it. So, Let's see, who's right? Well, of course, Einstein was right. Who's wrong? Well, of course, Newton was wrong. And who woke up from the grave? Well, that would be Leibniz! Leibniz woke up from the grave and said, I invented calculus. The Brits tried to uh, dig him back into the grave, but this time they were stopped by Bernoulli's brother, who woke up with a shovel in his hand to dig out Leibniz again, and said, yes, he invented calculus. And he, he, it was only a small distance from Germany to Switzerland, only about 500 kilometers. And that's what Walter said. Oh, people can come back from the dead. And then the Brits said, shut up, I told you it's a German thing, go back in. Oh God, Linus just woke up again! Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.